So it's, uh, I want to thank the organizers for inviting me. Um, it's a real honor to speak at this conference. Uh, it's wonderful to have so many young people interested in four manifolds and uh, some old people around as well. Um, I think maybe you're wondering what this word ample is. It's uh, never been used before in this context. And uh, the work I'd like to describe is joint work with Dave Oakley, Lee Jung Kim, Danny Ruberman. And I haven't cleared the use of this term with him. In fact, I brought it up to Dave and he said, no way. So <laughs> I'm nevertheless going to push this term. Um, in algebraic geometry, you have the notion of an ample line bundle, which is a bundle that has enough sections to get a projective embedding. So that it's the use of the word ample, meaning there are sufficient number of things to do something. Um, so I want to think of ample four manifolds as a notion involving smooth structures on a four manifold. So this morning we heard from Andras that there are four manifolds simply connected even that have more than one smooth structure. This was first realized by Donaldson. Um, in fact, typically it seems that they may have an infinite number of smooth structures, a phenomena unique to dimension four. So that's roughly the idea of an ample manifold. It's got a lot of smooth structures. So let me just annotate on this page. So X would be some simply connected four manifold. And um, I'm going to be denoting M sub X, the set of all smooth structures. So typically one might think this is infinite. Um, now we know already that there's a quadratic form associated with X because it's simply connected. Everything lives sort of in H2 of X. Um, so the quadratic form is measuring the self-intersection, say, of a class in H2 of X. Now, because it's simply connected, the Hrebich theorem gives you an isomorphism with pi 2. So that means you can represent every class by an immersed sphere. Let's assume these are smooth. So by a smoothly immersed sphere. And if you were in higher dimensions, of course, just by transversality, you could move that sphere so it had no self-intersections. You'd get an embedded sphere. But in dimension four, it's interesting as to which classes can be represented by embedded spheres. So not all classes can be represented by embedded spheres. You can think of the embedded spheres as the, the zeros of the minimal genus function that we've heard about. Every homology class in H2 can be represented by an embedded surface, and you minimize that over all representatives. So you're going to the integers greater than or equal to zero, and then you're looking for those that go to zero, that are represented by embedded spheres. Um, so in 1952, Rochlin proved that not all uh, classes are represented by embedded spheres in this setting. Um, basically by studying the signature and showing that the signature of spin four manifolds um, had to be a multiple of 16, whereas the algebra predicts it's just a multiple of eight. So this was a remarkable result. The non -exist the existence of of classes that could not be represented by spheres. But suppose it can be represented by a sphere. Um, how many spheres? That's a question that hasn't been explored as much. Uh, by how many, I mean, how many different spheres could you put in the manifold that are not related by an ambient diffeomorphism? So given a class alpha that is represented by a sphere, so g of alpha equals zero, you could look at sort of a moduli space for alpha of all the spheres up to ambient diffeomorphism that can represent that class. So in this early 60s, I'm, I'm kind of giving a synopsis here because I know I might not get to the end if I go through the details on the subsequent slides. So in the 60s, Wall proved that an existence result for spherical classes, classes represented by spheres, he said, if X, this manifold, is 
the stabilization affected some of a four manifold with S2 cross S2, where the four manifold Y is indefinite, then you can represent every primitive ordinary class by a sphere. So again, going back to the moduli space of such spheres, how many spheres can you represent them by? So in general, I wanna think of an ample four manifold as one for which this is very large. It's infinite in a sense that I'll explain. And we're gonna prove that if X is ample, which means this is large, then if you stabilize, and I'll denote this stabilization by Y naught. The naught means you're connecting sum with S2 cross S2. So if you stabilize X, then this is gonna be homologically ample, which will mean that for all these primitive ordinary classes that Wall showed can be represented, they can actually be represented by infinitely many distinct two spheres embedded. Now, there, there's a trivial way of sort of, in some cases, depending on the self-intersection number of the sphere, of adding new classes that are not equivalent by doing local knotting or something. So I don't want that. I want simple spheres, ones whose complement is have the B and pi one. So I'll get to that in a minute. So I've jumped up this first slide, so I'll go on to the second. So here are the cast of characters. Um, in the middle here is, let's see what color I'll use. So there's what I was talking about a minute ago, the space, well, I had M sub X, but let's use script M to denote the set of all simply connected, smooth four manifolds. Uh, assume they're closed and oriented. And so sitting inside there are the ones that are homeomorphic to X. Now this is kind of a long story, but let me step back for a minute and just note, as we've talked about in uh, many other talks, um, there is a quadratic form associated with every four manifold. So in the middle here, you see for each X in script M, you have its quadratic form, which is a quadratic map from H2X to Z or a bilinear map from H2X tensor H2X to Z. So as a quadratic form, it's taking a class, it's representing it by a surface, it's looking at the self-intersection of that surface, which is an integer, and that's what it's assigned. So that quadratic form tells you a lot about the manifold, all the algebraic topology. Now in the corner down here, I comment on the classification of quadratic forms. This has not been accomplished. It's pretty much hopeless. Um, so there are two characteristics I'd like to focus on. There's the parity of the form or the type. So that's even or odd. And that refers to the fact of whether self-intersections are always even or whether sometimes they're odd. So that's the parity of the form. The definity of the form, whether it's definite or indefinite, is a question of whether the form always has the same sign. Always greater than or equal to zero, then it's positive definite. Less than or equal to zero, negative definite. If, it's, if you've got classes of both positive and negative self-intersection, then it's indefinite. So you have this little box like this. And on the bottom, the indefinite forms, um, they're classified by their rank, signature, and type, even or odd. This has been mentioned before. The definite forms are hopeless. They are, I put it in red, they're basically unclassifiable in the sense that they're just too many. If you fix a rank and a signature, there the number grows very dramatically with the rank and the signature as they grow. Okay. Now Friedman can classify topological simply connected four manifolds up to homeomorphism, which is what I have at the bottom here and top. And you also have a quadratic form. You can define that in terms of the cup product pairing on the second cohomology. So basically Friedman showed first that that is onto. Every form is realized as the form of a four manifold and it's one-to-one, one, at least if you're on even forms. On odd forms, it's two-to-one. 
So it basically says, if you fix the form, you've almost determined the manifold up to this ambiguity for uh, the odd forms. Let's see, the other key uh, point about my lecture today is the notion of stabilization. So that's here in the middle. So this set of smooth, simply connected four manifolds can be stabilized by taking a manifold and connecting some with, so I'm gonna put a superscript zero to indicate the operation of connecting some with S2 cross S2, superscript plus to indicate the connect sum with CP2, and superscript minus to indicate the connect sum with CP2 bar. So these you can think of as operators on M, taking this space to itself. And back here, I'm gonna use M hat to denote those X's that after one stabilization, so those four manifolds that when you connect some with S2 across S2 become simple in the sense that they are connected sums of these basic building blocks. So simple is often in the literature called dissolvable or dissolves. To say that a manifold dissolves means it's a connected sum of either S2 cross S2s plus or minus CP2s or the K3 surface, plus or minus the K3 surface. So those are kind of standard manifolds, like what uh, Andras talked about this morning, connected sums of CP2s and CP2 bars. Those are simple, I'm calling those simple. So M hat again are those four manifolds that when you stabilize once by connecting sum with S2 cross S2, dissolve into connect sums smoothly of these basic building blocks. Okay, I have a picture on the right here of this whole thing. I'm thinking of putting the quadratic forms in the XY plane and then putting the smooth manifolds above and the topological manifolds below and projecting. So in a given stack like this, above a given quadratic form QX, I put all the smooth manifolds. And for all we know, that's all, that stack is always infinite when there's anything. When there's any smooth smoothing of the manifold, potentially there are infinitely many. And below, there are at most two, one or two, depending on whether the parity is even or odd. So for example, take the quadratic form represented by the one by one matrix with a one in it. That is the quadratic form of CP2. But there's another topological manifold, not homeomorphic to it. It's often called the churn manifold that has the same quadratic form. That's these two little green dots down below projecting to that form. But above, you're asking how many smooth structures there are. Well, I shouldn't have picked CP2 because we don't know. There may only be that standard smooth structure. But in many cases, there are infinitely many. Um, in this picture, you may also notice that in the back, the definite forms have been excluded with the exception of a few and sort of half of the even definite ones have been excluded. So that's work first of Rocklin to exclude sort of half the even ones, and then Donaldson to exclude all the definite ones, and then Fruta in the 90s to exclude some of the um, even definite, indefinite ones. So I've kind of got this picture of the smooth things as stacks above that portion of the quadratic forms that are realized by smooth manifolds. We don't actually know, there's this 11 eighths conjecture, some of you have heard of, which is happening sort of at this, this end of the diagram there. We don't actually know which forms are represented. Okay. So at the bottom here, I have the formal definition of what I mean by a four manifold being ample. So I said before, ample simply means it's got a lot of smooth structures. So that should mean MX is at least infinite. But I want it to be infinite in a very strong way. So this notation, <laughs> I could have written it out in words, but let's see if we could track through it. So 
I've got here m sub x. So that's all the smooth manifolds homeomorphic to x. I put a hat over it. So that means the, I only want to look at those smooth structures that when you connect some with S2 cross S2, that is stabilized once, they become standard, dissolvable, simple. So that's what the, that looks like. So this plus infinity, that's using this other operator plus that I had on the other page, which is connecting some with CP2. That's another way to stabilize. So that plus infinity means I want to have an infinite family of smooth structures that stabilize when you connect some with S2 cross S2 in one step. But no matter how many times you stabilize by connecting some with CP2, they never become uh, diffeomorphic. So it's this infinite family of smooth structures that under, see, when you connect some with CP2, it's often called an anti-blow up. So no matter how many times you anti-blow up, they remain distinct. But connect some with S2 cross S2, they become the same. But I also want an infinite family inside this moduli space that no matter how many times you blow up, that is connect some with minus CP2, they also remain distinct. Okay, so I hope that's clear. I, do I see any questions in the chat? No. Okay, let me reiterate again what this notion of ample means. A simply connected four manifold is ample if it has an infinite family of smooth structures that when you zero stabilize them once, they become standard, but no matter how many times you plus stabilize them, they remain distinct and another infinite family on the same four manifold of exotic structures that again stabilize under one stabilization with S2 cross S2, but no matter how many times you blow up, that is connect some with CP2 bar, they remain distinct. I should mention that for symplectic manifolds, that the cyborg written invariants, which we've heard about, are non-trivial, there's a blow up formula. So if you have symplectic manifolds distinguished by cyber Witten, then no matter how many times you blow them up, that's the minus over here on the right, they will remain distinct, distinguished again by the cyber Witten. Right? So, so for symplectic manifolds, you have half of this, although you don't necessarily know the hat part, which is that the connect sum with S2 cross S2 should normalize them. So I wanna claim that in the geography results that have been obtained in the last 25 years or so for symplectic manifolds. One can actually extract this hat condition. Okay. So first I want to um, mention this wall result, which I mentioned at the very beginning. Um, this was the claim that if your four manifold X is the stabilization, so is equal to Y naught of an indefinite four manifold. Under that condition, then all primitive ordinary classes are spherical, where spherical means what I said before, it means there exists a two sphere S embedded in X representing alpha. But I want, in fact, an added condition. I want that to be a simple two-sphere. I want to avoid local nodding or things like that. So a simple two-sphere simply means that pi one of the complement is a BN. So let's take the case of a primitive class. If, if we're talking about alpha is not a multiple of another class, then this simple condition turns out to be simply that the complement is also simply connected. In general, the complement of, of the class uh, of the surface will uh, be, have a bionization, will have H1 uh, equal to a cyclic group of order D where D is the multiplicity of the class. That's an easy exercise. Okay, so this is Wall's result that in this, case where you've stabilized once an indefinite manifold, then all the primitive ordinary classes are spherical in this sense. You can represent them. So by ample, I just mean that 
a class is ample if there exist infinitely many distinct in the sense that there's no ambient diffeomorphism carrying one to the other, such two spheres. The moduli space is infinite. Okay, I'm, I'd like to define the notion of a homologically ample manifold to mean that all primitive ordinary classes are ample. So Wall proves that all primitive ordinary classes in this once stabilized situation are represented by spheres and homologically ample would mean all such classes are represented in fact by infinitely many spheres. So here's the main theorem that there exists lots of homologically ample format fields. Now the construction we actually use only produces simple ones. So we're only looking for example, in the indefinite case, the odd indefinite case, we're really looking at these manifolds, some number of CP2s connected some, some number of CP2 bars that were highlighted this morning. These are my simple ones in this, remember when we had this picture of quadratic forms. So here was the even, oops, sorry even and odd, definite and indefinite. We're in the smooth setting, so we don't have to look at definite forms at all other than the diagonal ones. I'm not looking at even forms right now, so I'm focusing on this lower case. And these manifolds uh, are all the manifolds that occur there, all the simple manifolds that occur there. In other words, all the odd indefinite simply connected four manifolds are homeomorphic to one of these. These are the simple ones. So there are lots of those that are homologically ample four manifolds. So let me go into this a little bit more. So there are two key lemmas. The first is you can kind of glean from the early geography results in symplectic topology. Um, that is that many odd uh, simply connected four manifolds are ample. I've got a plane going overhead, so I can't hear myself for the moment. Okay, so here, here is a picture. Here is a, um, a, gra uh, a picture of the odd indefinite manifolds. So in the B2 plus, B2 minus plane, um, XPQ occurs at the lattice point, with B2 plus equal to P, B2 minus equal to Q. So in that plane, uh, I guess Sekera mentioned earlier the BMY line. Bomagolov, Miyaoka, Yao line. It's a slope one half. It doesn't quite pass through the origin, but I'm going to just, it's close to the origin. Um, conjecturally, all symplectic four manifolds lie on or above that line. And conjecturally, the only one that lies on that line is, is CP2, which is right down here. Um, in many lattice points, one is able to produce lots in infinitely many um, symplectic, distinct symplectic structures. On four manifolds. Um, but I want this stronger ample condition, which is these infinite families, not only invariant under blowups, which is connect some with CP2 bar, which is moving up. That's what a blow up is, moving up in that direction, but also invariant under moving to the right, which is an anti blow up. By the way, the zero blow up is moving diagonal up one in this diagram. So I claim the many includes, for example, all the lattice points um, in a wedge for some line of any given slope. So for any m greater than a half, there's a line of that slope. Again, it might not pass through the origin, but I'll just scale so that at least generically you see it, it looks like this. Here's such a line. There exists such a line for any m greater than, greater than one half. 
such that if you reflect that line across the diagonal, which is the signature zero case, this reflection, you look at the wedge in between, then all those lattice points, except those um, where either coordinate is convert to zero mod eight. So I'm eliminating a few of them. All of those are ample. So this, um, although not explicitly stated in the literature, actually follows, oh, I should go back. I didn't state the second. Yeah, the second one, well, I'm trying to get homologically ample manifolds. So this is just talking about ample ones, the smooth structures on the manifold. Homologically ample is talking about representing the homology classes by spheres. So I'm claiming that if X is ample, if you find some X that's ample, then you stabilize once. So there's X, there's X stabilized, that will be homologically ample. So back to one now. That actually follows from known results. Um, Braun, Gart, and Kachik in, in 2005, basing their work on uh, constructions that Gompf gave in 95 and Andras gave in 99. Um, and a trick of Mandelbaum and Murshazan described the geography of symplectic four manifolds that are ACD. ACD means almost completely decomposable, which in my interpretation means that, oops, that they are connected sums that if you stabilize once, oops, almost completely de decomposable means that if you blow up a plus one, that is connect sum with CP2, they become simple. They fall apart, they dissolve. So, you need these constructions of Gompf and Stipschitz, but you then take fiber sums of such things and use um, cyber witten invariants and to fill in the holes, uh, refinement of that due to Bauer and Furuta to get the geography of ACD symplectic manifolds to be basically lying above the BMY line, or at least above some line of slope greater than one half, um, all, the, all the lattice points. There. I'm going to stay away, as Andras did this morning, from B2 plus equal to one. But so I'm not going to go further into that. Um, I want to finish, let's see, 48. I have only a couple of minutes with the second key lemma, which is this one. So I want to show you why if if a manifold is ample, if it has all these smooth structures, then stabilizing once it becomes homologically. So for simplicity, I'm gonna assume that my manifold is odd. So stabilizing once means I connect some with S2 cross S2. So if I have a, a picture of this, a handle body picture or something, stabilizing with S2 cross S2 means I add this little hot flake, zero framed hot flake on the side. Um, you can slide the white one handle over the blue one and you will change its framing by an even amount. Actually, I want to slide the, the blue one over the white one. So I can always re-describe that as connecting some with this Hertzebrook surface. It's still S2 cross S2, but it's described as a different um, S2 bundle over S2. So I've changed the framing on the zero section to n. But I can actually, because I'm assuming oddness of this manifold, change it to any n, not necessarily just even n's. OK, so what I'm really saying is that you can find in this S2 cross S2 factor, or a little more, you can find um, spheres of self-intersection n. So once I've stabilized, I find nice embedded spheres. Now. I want to use the fact that X is ample, has all these smooth structures to show that the, those spheres that I get are going to, going to, that I can generate an infinite family of spheres. So the basic operation here is called blow up surgery. And this goes way back to Curvera and Milner. Um, if I have a uh, two sphere embedded in my four manifold and its self intersection is, not zero, let's say it's positive, let's say it's three, then I can blow up 
a couple of points on it, or say three points, and I can lower its self-intersection to zero. So that's the blow up part. And then I want to surger the resulting two sphere. So given a two sphere of self-intersection n, I can blow up these points on it and then surger it. What do I get? Well, I claim that doing that, which I'm denoting by taking my manifold and slash the, the sphere of self-intersection n, I claim that I get x stabilized by connecting some with n copies of CB2 bar, which I'm denoting x to the minus n. So there's a little Kirby calculus picture of that, because the remember that the stabilization can be described as adding on this picture, n0. So that's over on the side. And now I want to blow up, that's the first thing, blow up n points. So that amounts to adding n little meridians to the blue circle, all with framing minus one. Then I want to surger the blue circle. Well, though Lisa hasn't said that at this point, basically that's what's going on in the background. I changed the zero framing on the blue. Now it's zero that I've blown up these points to a dot. So that's what I did here. But now I can slide all the green, all the minus one circles over that other white circle with zero framing to bring them off to the side. And I then cancel the one and two handle, the blue dot dotted circle, in the neighboring zero. So what's happened is that I've really just blown up X. So the final slide then is that if X is ample, I've got all these different structures. These are distinct even after arbitrarily many blowups. I have to repeat this argument later with anti blowups, but now I'm doing blowups. So remember that we have, by the previous construction, a family of spheres, then for each of these manifolds living in these stabilizations. But all the stabilizations are diffeomorphic to the stabilization of X naught because I'm assuming this is in the hat world where everything stabilizes once. So I can use those diffeomorphisms to move those spheres over into this stabilization. But now once they're there, you can use results of wall from the 60s to put them all in the same homology class by a diffeomorphism. And you know they're distinct. There's no ambient diffeomorphism carrying one to the other because when you blow up surger them, you get these distinct smooth structures that X originally had. So that's the idea. And I'm sorry, I've gone over a few minutes, but I'll leave it at that. Thanks. So let's uh, together thank Paul for this talk. Uh, are there any questions for Paul? There's a question in the chat. Yeah, Clayton asks, Oh, so let me go back there. Danny's here. Great. <laughs> Poincaré dual to W2 is said to be characteristic. Yeah, I didn't tell you what an ordinary class is. It's sort of generic in the sense that it's not Poincaré dual to W2, um, but that's fine. He's answered that. Does the wall result mean that using genus functions directly can't work for disproving that one is enough. Maybe Clayton, you could elaborate by uh, unmuting and say what you. Oh, so are someone, asking. someone actually mentioned something in the chat to me that's saying that, like, if if, if you don't use, if, if you're somehow using like Cyber Witten. Or something like that, looking at some sort of genus function for something uh, that is uh, characteristic, then it, it could work. Yeah, this one is enough it, in the absolute world is the question of whether um, what I called m hat is actually equal to m. That is, is it conceivable that all these smooth structures are very delicate in that they all dissolve after one stabilization, connecting some with S2 cross S2? Mm -hmm. So um, I think the answer is yes, but I'm not quite clear about that. Um, speaking of which, someone might want to answer the question of whether there are any known examples of exotic pairs of four manifolds for which the genus functions are identical. 
that's sort of related. But the one is enough, by the way, in the, in the context of two spheres embedded in a four manifold. If you have two two spheres representing the same homology class with and in a simply connected four manifold whose complements are simply connected, then they can be distinct. Not, not, they could be topologically isotopic, but not smoothly isotopic. But if you stabilize one more time, they become smoothly isotopic. That's actually a result of uh, the same group here, Dave Oakley, Lee Jung Kim, Danny Ruberman, and also Hannah Schwartz. It's, so there is a one is enough result in a fairly general situation for embedded two spheres, but I guess this is asking for that. Do we know any example of exotic four manifolds such that connected sum with CP2 and CP2 bar are both are exotic? No, not that I'm pretty sure that's not known. I mean, that would be then, I mean, if you connect sum with CP2 and then CP2 bar, you get the stabilization. If it's an odd manifold you start with, you get the connected sum with S2 cross S2. So you can't, you can't sort of take a symplectic manifold and connect some with its negative because already the cyber witten invariant vanishes if it has enough B2 plus and B2 minus. Um, so, yeah, not that I know of. Anyone else can pipe up if they know. Yeah, but maybe we can use some kind of bower to do that. Can't hear. Oh. I'm saying maybe we can use bar fruta. Oh, bar fruta. Yeah, yeah. I thought of that right before this talk. Um, you mean in terms of a, for example, a symplectic manifold in minus. Yeah. yeah. Um, so for small sense. numbers of factors and connected sums, and and we have to use bar fruta. I mean, the geography results here give you. The odd values of one of your of your B two plus, and then to fill in the even values, and, and you can't go all the way because bar fruta doesn't carry you there. Uh, that's why I had to eliminate those that are congruent to zero mod a. And so, yeah, sort of the the trick was that I I guess I didn't really focus. Let me go back here. What's shown at the bottom of this page is the almost completely decomposable symplectic geography above the BMY line. Um, then, then what you have to note is that the bottom, the BMY line is below the signature zero line. So when you reflect that across the diagonal, you get uh, those, the minus symplectic geography, meaning manifolds for which that are ACD whose negative reverse the orientation the symplectic. And we need both of those. And that's why we, we intersect it. But the infinite families that I have in my ample definition are likely distinct. Uh, I think Kyle made this comment that we can actually do it for our, sorry, we can do it for uh, a boundary case. Like if we assume manifold with boundary. Maybe I think the example Kyle and Lisa constructed about uh, contractible exotic module manifolds, such kind of examples, maybe work here. So, Anubai, I couldn't quite uh, hear hear what you were saying. Sorry, I'm saying that Kyle made a comment that we can maybe do this thing for four manifold with boundary. Uh, oh, um, it, it's it's cheap, but. The, the, really, the really cheap shortcut would be to take like two exotic contractible four manifolds whose like doubles are the four ball or, or uh, the four sphere and sorry to, yeah and where like blowing up blowing them up does, with you know positive blow up doesn't make them become the same and now if you just connect some one boundary connects on one and it's and it's mirror you know if you if you blow up positively you can cap off the, the mirrored part into the, the four sphere, so you have bound to connect some with the four sphere that doesn't change it. And alternatively, you can blow up with the 
negative, you can do the other way. I mean, it's, I'd be happy to, to shoot an email. I, I think that, that doesn't really get to the spirit of the, of the problem at all. Okay, are there any other questions? If not, let's thank Paul again for this great talk. Thank you.